Hey there students, it's Mr. Verzat. Today we're going to start our environment lesson. Now environments are a lot of fun. They basically allow you to take the foundational rules of 3D, form building, color theory, value, lighting, all of that, and they allow you to get what's inside of your brain out onto the paper. They're fundamentals. Fundamentals are just tools to get what's in your mind out. Now at this level, you've already learned a lot of perspective. We're going to work backwards by taking photographs and extracting the camera information out of them. Why is this important? To get this image, I went through a lot of different thumbnail sketches. And thumbnail sketching is a great way to practice different compositions, different camera angles. And because we're designing for entertainment, we want to create dramatic and dynamic camera shots. Knowing where the eye is in 3D space is the same as placing a camera within a shot. With our exercise, we're going to take several photographs. You guys are going to extract the horizon line and the vanishing points and build a perspective grid from the photo. You'll do this six times on a sheet that has black borders that gives clean presentation for each of them. When you're finished, I want you to take your favorite one and then paint over it using the techniques that you've learned in class so far. This one is of the workshop and it's got several of the post-processing effects that you've learned. We've also got lighting calculated from its light source, you can see with the drop shadows, and just some rough figures that have kind of a basic one, two, three read pass on them. Not looking for super high detail, we're looking for correct perspective, correct positioning, and drawing within an established 3D environment. Convert it into a smart object after placing it by right clicking and clicking onto convert smart object then you'll be good. Just make sure you do it when it's large. Hold down shift so that the proportions are constrained. We want a lot of negative space around this and we want it to be a smart object if we're sizing this. If we take the rasterized image, shrink it way down and then hit enter and then transform it back to its original size, you're going to see that we've lost resolution. Now with a smart object, if we do the exact same thing, shrink it way, way down, and then scale it back up, we haven't lost any resolution. The reason for that is because smart objects, think of them as being tucked away in a separate little ghost file under the hood. Well, going back to basic perspective, let's ratchet it up a notch. We know that where two parallel lines converge, that's where the vanishing point is. So we're going to try to find areas of parallel lines within this image. So we could look at the top of the counter and then the top of this counter, make two lines, and where those two areas converge, that will be where one of the vanishing points happens to be. Let's try it. I'm going to use my line tool. Shortcut is U. You can control the thickness and the weight of the line, like so. Keep your line weight thin when you use the line tool. Let's draw a line on this corner right here. I'm going to start and continue, but you see I'm continuing off into the distance. Give yourself a ton of room and just line up that edge on the corner. I'm looking here as I'm doing that. Now let's find another corner. Let's start where it begins and draw and pull that line all the way out till it intersects with the first line that we had. Now my eye is right now on the countertop, making sure that I'm lining up perfectly with that corner. Let's go for a third one just to be safe. Let's see if there's another area in this image that would be parallel to these corners on these countertops. And I think this uh, corner rug right here or the corner of the, where the wall meets the floor would be a good one too. That's telling me that we can pretty much trust that the camera is pretty stable and that this is an area where a vanishing point would be. So in a new layer, I'm just gonna get a hard edge brush and make a little dot where that intersection point is. That's vanishing point number one. Start pulling several lines out from this dot. I've got all these lines. Shift click them, rasterize them, and then merge them together. Okay, so it's all in one layer. Duplicate them. You can also do that using Command J. And now what I'm going to do is rotate them around this center vanishing point. Free transform. Here's the bounding box. And in the center of the bounding box, we have this little hinge that shows up. 
place that hinge right smack dab on your vanishing point and then rotate those lines. We have more than one vanishing point. You're gonna see some other parallel edges converging off to the left. Let's find where that convergence point is. Here is our second vanishing point. After placing your vanishing point down, now you're gonna see two dots. Remember the rule of perspective is that your vanishing point will always lie on the horizon line. And let's just join both of those dots. There is our horizon within this shot. That's how tall the camera was when the photo was taken. That means if we're gonna add anything to the shot using our drawing skills, we can now know where we'll draw them below us or above us using perspective. Got my horizon and vanishing point one, vanishing point two. Let me show you how to clean this up. It's very easy. Basically, keep your photograph separate from this entire grid. I'm gonna merge everything in the grid together. Drag a box around the photo. Select the inverse and then just hit delete to trim everything. Now this grid is really overpowering the photograph. So I'm gonna turn down the opacity quite a bit just so I can still see the photo. Now you're gonna have an 11 by 17 canvas. And what I want you to do is bust it up into six areas and then one area where you're gonna have your favorite photo all enlarged. And this is just a black border that you put over the top. So here are three images that I've already done. And let's take our other one and bring it into this. Just go back, make sure that you've got the layers highlighted that you want to move around, okay? Move it up and hover over the tab for your exercise, right here. Drop it in and then size it up. Free transform and let's shift click so we can at least fill up the top and the bottom where the border is. And now just drop it underneath the layer that has your black and white borders. And we're crossing into this other photo here, so I'm gonna pull that underneath that photo as well. All right, let's explore application. So using the grid, it helps us to place objects in three-dimensional space. So we'll have a foot here, we'll have a foot here on this grid line. And you know, I'm kind of got lucky. Here's one of my vertical lines that I drew. And that's up to you if you want to do a bunch of the y-axis lines on the grid. But let's say he's shorter than us. Where's his shoulders gonna be? Well, here on this grid line, we can see. So we'll draw his shoulders in this area. He has a shoulder here and a shoulder here. Now he's got a neck and a head, and it looks like his eye line is just below where the camera is. Let's finish this figure out. It's gonna have an elbow. Now where do we connect the other elbow? We'll follow the grid line in perspective. His other elbow is gonna be here. He's gonna have a forearm with a hand. Well, where's his forearm and hand gonna be on the other image? Well, using this grid line here, we can see that's where his hand's gonna be. All right, he's gonna have a torso. He's gonna have a waist, hips, and from the looks of it, he's gonna have some pretty nubby legs. So one leg's gonna go down. Let's make sure his knee falls about here. Well, we're gonna follow this line, and that's where his other leg's gonna be in perspective. And we've just built a stick figure in perspective. That's the general thinking on how you can help your placement, your foreshortening. If we place the figure here somewhere, where are the feet gonna go? Well, using the grid, this line, we see that the edge of his foot does not touch it. So let's say back here is where one foot's gonna be. Let's see where his other foot's gonna go. You see he's using this line right here. So if he's on an axis like this, we can go back to his foot and see that he is not going, you know, his feet are gonna be about there. So you just use the grid to reposition and rebuild the figure. So you see where his head crosses horizon, well we know that things of equal size in 3D space will intersect horizon at the same spot. Well we know his head's still gonna cross here. So I'm gonna draw his head like that. He's gonna have a neck, shoulders, arms, follow the grid line to where his hand's gonna go, follow the grid line to where his hand's gonna go. There's his body and we just placed another figure in 3D space. That's generally how you use the grid to move things around. I decided to put three figures in here. 
using the grid to calculate their height and their placement. And how you do this, it's up to you. You see, no line art. This is just blocking in figures, blocking in forms. Now we calculate where the shadow is going to go. We would know that because if the light is coming from here, and it impacts this figure like that, it's going to impact a shadow on this part of this workbench, and everything's generally going to follow this angle where it hits the floor. So shadow on the floor and hitting the bench. Those are things you want to consider. Have some fun with the environment, and let's go over some of our post-processing effects that you've learned in class. Here's a color grading pass. I wanted to make the environment darker, so I didn't want to compete against all these other fluorescent lights in the shot. Let's get rid of them. So now we have this spotlight effect coming from here. Let's control the color and temperature and mood of the light. All I did was just go in and brush in yellow light. Maybe we could have a blur depth of field effect. A few mechanical components. These are just photo textures of engine parts that I slapped on top of the paint in the dark areas. Lens flare, just a hard edge brush, same color as the light, turned way down in opacity, and have a couple of these little guys follow the direction that that little blue spotlight from this robot is coming at us. Just some scratched, roughed up texture work, some color scattering, drop in some film grain for some noise, and you know, you got yourself a quick little assembled piece where you had some fun with placing some things that weren't in the world, added some post-production to give it some mood and cinematic look, all built off of a grid. Once you've done that, drop your finished piece from one of your favorite six photos, upscale it, do all that fun stuff to it, down here, and that will be your fun presentation bit. For pacing on this assignment, you should be able to get six grids done in one class time. Your first one is probably going to take the longest. Make sure you've got horizon, vanishing points, and your grid clearly outlined. So for example on this one, I don't have a very clear horizon line. I'll need that. And then use that information to make a fun, composited, pseudo paint over of your favorite shot. Hope you found this helpful. I look forward to seeing you guys in class. Take care.